Meet Elbridge Trask. He was a trapper, scout, and mountain man. In 1852, he and his family were some of the first white homesteaders in what is now Tillamook County. Meet the Trask River. It was named after, guess who? Elbridge Trask. And this is Trask House. And the Trask Coach. You get the idea. Anyway, timber was so plentiful in the Trask River Basin that early logging practices were focused pretty much on just getting the logs out, which was no easy task. As Oregon grew, so did the timber harvest to build cities and railroads. But little regard was given to the effect on the rivers and species of the watersheds, or even to the forests themselves, which contributed to some unintended consequences. Fast forward to the 1960s. Folks in the forestry and scientific community got together to see just what the effects of logging had on streams and fish. The initial LC watershed study, which ran from 1959 to 1973, answered several questions, but not all. It did result in one big revelation. Well, leaving trees next to streams for fish is a good idea. This discovery led to the Oregon Forest Practices Act in the early 1970s, which was one of the first acts of its kind to set standards on timber harvesting techniques to reduce impacts on forest streams. But by the 1990s, we knew we needed more data. We needed more science on a larger watershed scale. Three new watershed scale studies were initiated in Oregon between 1998 and 2006. Hinkle, Alci Revisited and Trask. These studies look closely at the effect of forest practices on key indicators of a healthy river habitat, water quality and aquatic species. But the reality was we needed more science in detail and scale to make informed long-term policy decisions. Policy that considers the needs of many different landowners with many different objectives and outcomes. I think the location in this area and just finding an area with different landowners to be able to do a project in is really special. To understand the bigger ecological picture, we needed a bigger study to put the pieces together. This is where Trask comes in. Not that Trask, this one. In 2006, the Watersheds Research Cooperative launched the Trask Watershed Study, a 10-year, multi-million dollar study to research, monitor, and quantify the effects of contemporary forest practices on the physical, chemical, and biological characteristics of streams. To accomplish this requires a cooperative, multidisciplinary, long-term approach. The Trask Study looks at differing harvest areas near streams with no fish. Clear cut. Clear cut with buffer thinning with buffers, and studies multiple basins within the Trask watershed. Not that watershed, this watershed. Well, the Trask project is a long-term uh, controlled experiment where we're trying to look at the impacts of contemporary logging techniques on the headwater stream ecosystem. I think the average people don't understand just how much is going on in these little streams that connection between these really small headwater streams and all the stuff downstream from there and even out into the Pacific Ocean is something that people probably don't think about. It. Really kind of boost our understanding of what drives uh, production in these small forested streams. We just want to know how good we're doing, how good are our forest practices regulations in maintaining and conserving our natural resources out here at the headwater level and is there any impact downstream. It's a comprehensive full spectrum look at the response of water quality, fish, amphibians, macroinvertebrates, birds and plants to contemporary forest practices. We're two thirds of the way through the study's timeline. While it's too soon to form conclusions, one thing's clear. We're collecting more valuable and unique data than ever before. Data that's going to help quantify the effect of harvest on headwater streams, Examine the effect from upstream harvest on the fish-bearing rivers and streams. Understand influences of the forest stream interactions on aquatic ecosystems. The Trask Watershed Study goes through 2016, but the bigger picture is already starting to come into focus. Discover what we've already learned from Alsi Revisited, Hinkle, and the pre-harvest period of the Trask at watershedsresearch.org.